Welcome back to the Labor Forum. This is our second uh, half hour, and uh, we have a, a, a much wanted guest on the program today. Uh, this is Lovett Thompson, and I wanted to say for folks who know, she's also the sister of our beloved Margaret Cardvo, who unfortunately died in the process of, of doing a great action uh, in the support of uh, folks with disabilities and was killed um, several months ago. Uh, Margaret was uh, a vice president of the board here at WRG and had so many, had so much of an impact on so many folks. And uh, Lovett is in the same exact mold of a person who um, gives much to the community. So, welcome, Lovett Cargobo Thompson. <laughs> and uh, Lovett is the uh, lead organizer of the Atlanta chapter of the National Domestic Workers Alliance, and we talk about them a lot because they are a reflection of this. Coming up from the bottom of some of the most marginalized, I don't want to say disrespected, just invisible mm -hmm. <laughs> workers uh, in this country, a huge number of them, and they have made major gains. And last week we reported on this uh, Georgia Supreme Court ruling uh, that, uh, that uh, essentially said uh, they have to be paid, domestic um, home health care workers employed by agencies have to be paid minimum wage. So welcome to the program. This is your first time, right? It is. Thank you. Thank yeah, you for having welcome. me. So again, uh, if you're watching on the YouTube channel, which is a live, watching radio live, uh, you will see that all four of us are here crowded around this table and we're going to have a conversation uh, with Paul McLennan and Ayanna Dunlop-Bell. Love it, and myself about um, really what's happening locally uh, with domestic workers in light of both what Paul's uh, This Week in History um, explanation of that there's actually an international convention or treaty regarding the rights of domestic workers and what's happening here in Atlanta and Georgia. Mm -hmm. So, love it. Give us a little clue about. Um, the background of the National Domestic Workers Alliance and the Atlanta chapter. Sure, thank you again for having me. So um, to say that um, the National Domestic Workers Alliance is a lazy organization, <laughs> we are far from that. Um, our organization is one of the leading voices uh, for dignity and fairness for the millions of domestic workers in the U.S., most of whom are minority women and increasingly immigrants who are being paid poverty wages. And our organization was founded in 2007. It works for the respect, recognition, and inclusion in labor protection for domestic workers. And here in Atlanta, we are certainly putting in a lot of work to make that happen um, for the domestic workers here who are still fighting um, for minimum wage, for inclusion in labor laws, um, and just for those protections that they deserve. So our domestic workers are primarily those who are home care providers, child care providers, nannies, and housekeepers. And usually the ones that we're advocating for are not affiliated with the company, so they're not usually protected with the same protections that are out there. Uh, recently with the recent DOL ruling for home care workers, uh, we're wanting to make sure that home care workers are included in this protection. Um, still here in the state of Georgia, we're fighting and working on the minimum wage, um, which is still about 550. Um, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. In this day and time, in this 2015, and it is below the federal level. Um, so that you know, too, in our fight for 15, you know, is where we're sort of you know trying to make some changes there. Because with that still, with that minimum wage still being so low, that still puts people below the poverty level. And they can't live on these wages. You know, this is impossible to live on these sort of wages in this day and time with everything going up in our society. I'm going to start by asking a question. So, all right, so you described a whole series of different kinds of occupations that come under the headline of domestic workers. Mm -hmm. Now, when you said every single one of them, I thought to myself, Okay, every single one of these requires skill and training. Absolutely. Uh, people who take care of infants and small children. Absolutely. This can't be any old buddy. No. 
uh, people who take care of folks who have disabilities Absolutely. and major illnesses and are maybe confined to bed can be somebody who doesn't know about medications, doesn't right. know about proper way to get somebody out of a wheelchair, out of a bed, etc., etc. Yeah. Uh, people who are housekeepers absolutely have to know about all kinds of things, chemicals absolutely. and all kinds safety, of safety, and <laughs> everything you can imagine. All right, so here are these folks who provide necessary services, mm -hmm. and you say most of them or many of them aren't even paid five fifty an hour, and then it goes without saying. There's no pension. There's no health yeah, insurance. Absolutely. There's no vacation. Yeah. There's no nothing. Nothing. All right. Now this is shocking. I hope this is shocking to people. Now the 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 National Labor Relations Act. Uh, we mentioned this last week. The Nash, and we've mentioned it before. The National Labor Relations Act uh, was passed uh, with a lot of gra um, grassroots fight to actually get a minimum wage here in the United States, and. But there were groups of workers that were kept out of that. And one of those groups of workers was domestic workers. Another group was farm workers. This was all done to appease the Jim Crow segregationist southern elected leaders, officials, um, both in the House and, the, and in the Senate. And it took 70-something years for there to be some changes. Can you talk a little bit about uh, the, I guess I want to say how, um, across the country, gains have been made by domestic workers? And maybe you could talk about some of them, like what's happened in New York State, what's happened in Minnesota, mm -hmm. stuff like that. What are, what are the victories that have happened? Well, some of the major victories is that they've been able to win a Bill of Rights. Um, and with that being said, um, it has included these domestic workers. Um, they're now protected under labor laws. This which, is New York State, right? Absolutely. Um, and it makes a difference. When, they're, when they have that protection, they can receive the minimum wage that they deserve for the work that they're doing. Um, and this is something that we're wanting to see also in the state of Georgia, which is going to take a while for us to win a Bill of Rights, but we definitely want to see something like that happen as well. Um, so there have been a lot of victories. There's been a lot of momentum um, as far as the workers getting behind this um, work and this advocacy that we're doing because they see how important it is to them um, for them to be involved in this work and not for someone else to actually be a voice for them. So they're able to share their stories with us um, and we're able to bring a lot of attention to um, the work that's being done because it is again one of the fastest growing occupations out there and with our population you know aging, um, those that are dealing with dif different disabilities um, or just those women, those families that are in the workforce and are needing someone to care for their kids at home. Um, there is a need for domestic workers, and with that being said, there needs to be protection, and they should be receiving the minimum wage that they deserve. So, um, a question I had about, and I don't know if this is related to the to the judge's ruling. Does it cover only people who are hired by agencies or anyone? How does that work? Do most domestic workers contract out? as individuals or do most of them go through an agency? You, I would say it's half and half. You have a lot of them that are contract through the agencies, but then you have a lot of them that are being hired by families. And with that being said, there's no contract a lot of times in place to protect them. So a lot of times they all agree and take these jobs in the homes of these families and then there's just no protection for them. You know, they can work for years, and we've had individuals that have been member that are members of our organization that have worked for years for families, and then one day they're just let go with no protection, no sort of you know um, savings or anything to compensate for their time lost. Um, so we're wanting to make sure that, and you know, because of that, we're just wanting to make sure that those families which are not usually those individuals that are usually not protected by the labor laws uh, or not hired through these companies, um, those that are direct hires are still protected as well because it's a lot of them that are in that So you're looking at area. it as an industry, I don't know if that's the right word, but a, 
across the board. Absolutely. Everyone. Absolutely. Because before it has not been, it, it hadn't always been that way. And those that were going through the agencies probably had more of a protection than those that were not. So, so I do have a question with the um, with the advent of technology. You have these sites like uh, Care.com and, and your Craigslist and your however they go up. Oh, your Care.com mm -hmm. and your Craigslist and however people are making contact mm -hmm. to, to find mm -hmm. their domestic worker. Mm -hmm. um, so are you finding that there's any kind of way that you can get those companies to... I know they won't probably, mm -hmm. but you understand what I'm saying. Is there any kind of way that you can that you have to monitor, like how the workers themselves are being treated and 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 paid or whatever through those companies? I mean, I'm sure they're not going to tell you, but I mean, I, I'm not sure if people have even thought about it that way. Yeah. Because I watch a lot of TV mm -hmm. and I see a lot of Care.coms and all mm -hmm. this other good stuff where you can find to anybody to do anything mm -hmm. on the on the internet internet. Um. So. Is there any kind of way or accountability that you are finding with, you know, people using it to find their, you know, domestic workers? Well, there should be more accountability in mm -hmm. place um, to ensure that those that are being hired um, through these um, websites and whatnot are being protected and are still being given the wages. But you have to understand that when you have a agency or a company like this, they're getting their share <laughs> from the work that someone else is doing. So a lot of times, you know, even when they're putting in all the work, that particular company is getting a part of that, what they're earning. And at the end of the day, what they're bringing home is still not a lot. Right. So yeah, there should be more, you know, oversight there to make sure. Um, but that's, yeah, definitely been one of the um, challenges is okay. just making sure that these particular agencies, companies, whatever, are doing just that. Okay. Yeah. So I'd say one of the things is if there's a, you know, if there's an actual building where an agency mm -hmm. operates out of, mm -hmm. you actually have a place to go to register your complaint. There's mm -hmm. actually a person there. Mm -hmm. But I think when you're working with one of these dot coms, uh, a worker who doesn't get paid or is treated badly or yeah, whatever, yeah. really, I don't know what their recourse is. Right. I don't know where they can go. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know what they can do. So this, I think this, uh, this whole move by many businesses to do this, I mean, that's everything from the Uber drivers to, you know, everybody else, where there's no sort of physical boss any place, mm -hmm. no physical no human relations, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that you are just sort of left uh, on your own. And I think that's the big thing that we want to talk about all the time, is that workers are... Um, made to feel all the time that they are on their own mm -hmm. and uh, particularly in occupations like home health care where absolutely. the person is oftentimes in the home absolutely. alone there's absolutely. nobody else uh, there absolutely. for uh, her or him absolutely. to consult and with. And if they're a direct hire it's hard for them to even speak to what it is that they don't want to do or what they will do um, for the fear of losing their job. Um, because a lot of times when they are hired into the home um, and it's just by that family, well, if they're, if they're saying they're not going to do the job and they're not going to do X, Y, and Z that they're being asked to do, then a lot of times they're looked at as being replaceable, you know, and someone to just go in and replace them and they can pay them cheaper. Um, so we're also making sure that we're speaking to the youth who also take on these sort of jobs mm -hmm so that they understand how important it is that they you know see the value and the dignity in the work that's being done and those that are doing this as a profession that they too understand you know how they probably shouldn't accept less or they you know shouldn't um, accept any of these things that we're advocating against. And I've seen uh, that's part of what you do is provide services and training like absolutely. a software for a GED. Absolutely. absolutely. Where else are people going to get Resume that? writing, all of those things that can help them, contract negotiations, um, those who may not understand how to do that, how they can develop one for themselves so that they'll have that when they're taking these jobs and if they're not affiliated with any company they have something to stand on. You know? you're, re you're redefining what a union traditionally has done, right. which is just, you know, handle, you're really right. empowering people Absolutely. at a very basic level. Absolutely. And also we're, you know, our same member base that we have, we're also 
developing their leadership skills mm -hmm. so that they're able to get into this work and do uh, many of the things that we're doing as well. And, and these skills are transferable, so they can take so. it wherever they go. <laughs> and not only that, we've had many of the domestic workers that are members of your chapter Absolutely. on this radio Absolutely. station, on this program, Absolutely. and they um, both uh, speak eloquently and persuasively mm -hmm. about the issues that they do on their jobs and the fact that they love their work. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I want to ask you a little bit about this uh, contract negotiation because I think Tamika, uh, when she was on the program once, talked about this situation of what you would, I guess you would call, bleeding over to other work. Mm -hmm. In other words, somebody gets hired to, let's say, take care of uh, an infant. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, the child of the family's sister or sister-in-law needs some help. So all of a sudden, now you've got a toddler. Mm -hmm. And oh, by the way, can you go run pick up the laundry? Oh, absolutely. Can you cook dinner? <laughs> can you clean the house? Sort of a house manager. Absolutely. So they pick up more responsibilities than what they were actually hired for. And that's a lot of what we hear, too, with our members, that they were initially just hired to be a nanny or a child care provider and that in turn has turned into them doing all these chores that they didn't agree um, on and so we're definitely one to make sure that in speaking to our members that they understand that you know there is you do have a level you have control and you you do have some power and control in this situation and we're trying to equip them with the tools that they need in order to be them be their best in these environments. So if that's contract negotiation, helping you to develop that, understanding what that means, so that you have this concrete, you know, paper that you could take into this job with this provide this employer, then you have that and um this and is you can my use job it. And this is my job description. And it's it's laid out as far as what we're gonna agree to what it is that I will be doing. And if that is to change, I, I still feel that that should fall in that same format in a contract where both parties agree to whatever that may be so that everyone's on the same page. But it, oftentimes it's not the case. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a kind of a question that's come up because we also have had many uh, people with disabilities on this program. Mm -hmm. This seems to be the kind of, I would say it's the divide and conquer mentality of, uh, of, so, of the government. So on the one hand, you have a limited amount of money that people who are, let's say, on SSI get that they can use to pay uh, somebody who perhaps comes in and helps uh, uh, cook for them or mm -hmm. clean or provides other services. And it's a limited amount of money. And then on the other hand, you have domestic workers who are living in poverty, can't afford to get sick, can't afford to retire, can't afford to go on a vacation, can't afford to take care of a sick person in their own home or their ch old children. Or themselves. Or themselves, <laughs> because they don't make enough money. Mm -hmm. So, so, the, so, the, so they, what, they, what the people like to say is that these are these competing interests. Mm. And I think what we always want to say on the labor forum is, no, there's only one interest, and that's <laughs> the interest of workers to get what is fair and just, whether that is a disabled worker or a worker who's working in the home. So how is it that you deal with this situation where somebody might say to a domestic worker who works, uh, who's a member, uh, if, you, if, I, if I have to pay more, I can't have you work for me anymore. What do you do? That is a challenge, you know, um, when there's a need and there's a demand. Um, and what we're trying to do is just to make sure that that demand is not just placed on the families, where they're having to pay out of pocket for these um, services that they need. A lot of times that's what I've seen where families are put in situations where they're having to pay out of pocket and it's expensive. It does add up. Um, when you're looking at the need of that individual, the time that you're going to have to spend with them. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, just having the consumer, knowing that both of them are interrelated and um, that the work goes together, that where you need people that are needing the service and then those are, you have those um, 
domestic workers um, that are needing to provide the service. Um, there just has to be more done in order to support that work as well, where the government can come in and, and provide some assistance to these families um, so that it's just not left on them to have to cover that that's a that's a real point of intersection for mm -hmm. coalition building, mm -hmm. I think, and we've got to figure out how to do this better. Absolutely. And I've seen it at MARTA because we have that same relationship mm -hmm. between the people who provide a service and Absolutely. the people who receive it. Absolutely. And it's such a powerful relationship. Mm -hmm. And if we can use that mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. to go to the Capitol Absolutely. and fight for both of on both sides at the same time, Absolutely. that's unbeatable. Absolutely. We just have to figure out how to do it. Well, one of the ways we can do it is by people just sharing their stories. Mm -hmm. And those that are receiving the, the, the service, they can actually start sharing their stories of how important these domestic workers are to them how important it is for them to not be limited to the number of hours that they can work, that they be paid fairly for the work that they're doing because there is a need for this and we cannot ignore it because again it's one of the growing one of the fastest growing occupations and we have to do something to address the, the wages that they're receiving and their protection. And one of the most important things that, that we've seen with the domestic workers and in the MARTA situation with paratransit is is the problem with turnover mm -hmm. and you want stable long-term relationships mm -hmm. and that's only going to happen when people are being treated right absolutely and paid fairly I've seen the same thing even in Mississippi and that was where I moved from and a lot of the um, home care providers were paid at minimum like ten dollars if they were working with an agency but the turnover rate was ridiculous and they couldn't keep people in the homes to care for them for a number of you know for a long period of time and to receive funds through Medicaid you know if they were limited on funds then they they weren't putting home care providers in the home and so the waiting list became a long waiting list to just receive that particular service which put families in a situation where if they needed this immediately they have to come out of pocket so yeah something has to be done and yeah again one of the ways that we can start to highlight it is through the stories you know people actually sharing their stories telling how important it is for these domestic workers home care providers child care providers how important and how valuable they are to them and now obviously it has been brought up again in relation to this issue that the number of people the so-called baby boomer mm -hmm. generation is reaching the ages where many people are going to require that. And then likewise, younger workers are going into the workforce and will be needing child care. Absolutely. And so it is on uh, both ends of the spectrum mm -hmm. of the workforce mm -hmm. where, the, and this job is uh, not just a vital service, it is actually a service that is needed by society and is our song at the beginning of the, of the program always says that, that what we're talking about is the people who do the work. Absolutely. And we want everyone who does the work mm -hmm. to get what is justly theirs. Absolutely. And uh, we definitely always encourage solidarity, unity in action, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and really getting rid of the idea that uh, people uh, come second to profit. Mm -hmm. People are as well. And that, right. Well, hey, it's almost the end of the program. I'm going to get, offer both the Ayana and Love It an opportunity uh, to uh, say how folks can reach them. So we'll let Ayana go. And uh, if, so if there's a young worker out there who says, wow, just what I've been waiting to hear about, uh, how do they get in touch with you? And similarly, if there's somebody who's in a who is a domestic worker or wants or has relatives who are and want to get in touch with Love It, we'll have her go next. And if you're a young young domestic worker, you can go next to Love It. So um, uh, the Atlanta Leaders of Tomorrow. Uh, the Facebook is exactly that Atlanta Leaders of Tomorrow. Oh, all the words. All the words. Oh, not right? a lot. A no, lot the words. just on Facebook is all the words. <laughs> but on uh, Twitter, it's at a lot tomorrow. And on Instagram is the same thing at a lot tomorrow. Our email address is Atlanta Leaders of Tomorrow at gmail.com. We tried to make it really easy because it's really long. Um, but um, 
the one thing I did want to say quickly is what our uh, mission statement is, is to promote, empower, and unite through education, collaboration, and active involvement. And we try to live up to that, like, every day. All right, so love it. How do people get a hold of the Domestic Workers Alliance chapter here in Atlanta? So, and do you have any activity coming up? Oh. <laughs> So if you would like more information about the National Domestic Workers Alliance, please go to um, check out the website. It's www.domesticworkers.org. Um, there you will find a lot of information about our organization and what we're doing. Our next activity coming up, we're going to be doing a story time, storytelling um, for nannies, child care providers, parents, families who would want to just bring their kids out and have a fun storytelling time. We are changing the date, so as soon as I get a new date on that, I will share it with Miss Diane. All right, thank you so much, both of you. So, folks, it's the end of our, um, this hour of the uh, Labor Forum here on WRG. I do certainly hope that I'm going to see every single person who listens to the Labor Forum at the uh, WRG Carnival of Cultures this Saturday, 2 to 5 at the Solarium, 321 West Hill Street. We have such great items for you to bid on, marvelous food, fabulous entertainment, and so many other surprises. And of course, please do come to, uh, oh, it's on Sunday, Sunday, December 13th. <laughs> and, um, and if you are interested in the uh, protest, the march and rally against racism and anti-immigrant and refugee, bigotry and discrimination, um, please do see. I think the Facebook page is entitled, Welcome to Georgia. And that's it for today. From Paul, Ayana, Lovett, and me, Christopher, and Ozzy. Take care, and we'll see you again next Monday.